Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark, and that's for art. I'm going to read some more from the Human Radiation Studies, Remembering the Early Years, Oral History of Dr. John W. Goffman, Ph.D., M.D., conducted December 20th, 1994. And we are on a new subtitle. <coughs> Excuse me. It's called, I don't know, I can't see it. Attitudes Towards Radiation in the AEC's Biological and Medical Program. Goffman. But this was lost on people who came in to run the Atomic Energy Commission Biology and Medical Program. Oh, let me go back to see what he was talking about. <clears throat> this is an illustration of what we call disaster creep. Scientists and physicians never in the early part of the century never thought of the possibility that they had to look that they had to look out for something 40 years down the line properly people get pretty damn excited if they if the most sensitive to radiation are kitties less than 1 years old at 40 years old they don't regard themselves as proper candidates to die a 40 year old cancer is a serious matter But this was lost on people who came to run the Atomic Energy Commission Biology and Medical Program after the passage of McMahon's Atomic Energy Act. Oh, I wonder what that was. Let me, let me underline this. Sorry. I want to highlight that so I'll, I can remember to go back and look what that is. Because then otherwise I'll just be going, where was that that I said I wanted to see that? Here it is. Okay. They brought in the whole troops from radiology from all over the world. These people had all had this mindset that two to four hundred rads of X-ray or gamma rays can't hurt you. They poo-pooed it. Let me illustrate for you. Let me illustrate it for you. I don't know your community, but you've heard of the shoe store fluoroscope, I'm sure. Did you ever see one? No, I haven't. Oh, I know what. Someone told me about that today, where you'd put your feet in and see the x-rays. Too young, said Goffman. The shoe store fluoroscope. I know when I was a kid in the 30s, I visited the shoe store and got fluoroscoped. The first scientific paper on the shoe floor fluoroscope was written in 1949. Why was it then? Because every goddamn hamlet in America, everywhere, had a fluoroscope in the shoe store. And nobody studied it. Nobody had the vaguest idea of what kind of dose you got to your feet got or anywhere else. Uh, what the fluoroscope was, was in fact, Charlotte and I were talking about it. You go into the shoe store and you stick your feet into this little thing and you could x-ray, you could see right through your shoes and see your bones. I never saw one, but Charlotte said she, they did them all the time. So in the New England Journal of Medicine, back to back in 1949, are two papers, one by Dr. Williams on measurements he did on the fluoroscope in about a dozen shoe stores, and the second paper was by Lewis Hempelman, and Lewis, you know, came up from Rochester Group of Radiology. Lewis Hempelman said, well, we really don't know how much to, we really don't know too much about 200 rads but we really should probably restrict the use of the fluoroscope. Here they've been and here and they've been in every hamlet for 20 years at least. They had great solutions for how to handle this problem. Put a sign in the shoe store fluoroscope. Do not use more than 3 examinations per day nor 12 times per year as a customer. What did you have to do to look into your feet, the bones of your feet? You press a button. That was the only control of this thing. So 20 years later, after these things have been all over the country, they comment on safety. Why the long delay? Because they didn't think of any of these things. They didn't think any of these things mattered. And they're the people who came in to lead the atomic energy scene. Shields Warren was doing pathology, Robert Stone, radiologist, Stafford Wigan, radiologist. 
Stafford became the dean of UCLA. He's one of the early publishers on the various methods of doing pelvimetry and the other examinations when he was a radiologist. I have to tell one thing. Stafford Warren was Robert Stone's right hand in the Manhattan Project Medical Division. When we did that job for Oppenheimer of isolating that one milligram of plutonium from uranium, Stafford Warren announced that he was coming to inspect our operations there and in Gilman Hall. He and a couple of others from the Biology of Medicine Project of the Manhattan Report came, of the Manhattan Project came. Here we were getting radiated, irradiated with the lead in front of these two big vats to try to give them, to give us something from shielding. I'm going to read that again. Here we were getting irradiated with lead in front of these big vats to try to give us something, some shielding. We were using chemicals like crazy to process a ton of uranium nitrate. We had to use a lot of sodium acetate and sodium nitrate, and it came in five pound cardboard casks. We emptied out a cardboard cask. We'd set it over in the corner of the room. Stafford Warren's report on our operation to the Manhattan Project included nothing about radiation hazard. They said, they have these boxes stacked in one corner of the room. Somebody could have one of these boxes, well, excuse me, somebody could have one of these boxes fall on them. It was like a cupboard hat box falling, so it could not hurt you. That was his report, though. But that's a little separate vignette. So the whole cast of characters, Eugene Sanger, who's gotten a hell of a lot of a bad rap. Why do you think he's gotten a bad rap? asked Gorley, and Goffman replied. I think he deserved a bad rap. Most of them don't deserve a bad rap. I don't think Joe Hamilton was really an evil person. I don't think Lou Hempelman was an evil person. In fact, he participated in some very good studies of dose reconstruction for some of the people who got early doses to the thymus glands and thyroid and later developed cancer. Later, breast cancer occurring. And now there's a precautionary tale about this. It's interesting how people's minds can be compartmentalized. Let me illustrate. In 1946, when 1946 broke on the scene, we had the Atomic Energy Commission set up and in, in, in operation January 1st, 1947. I like Sh Shields Warren, by the way. I thought very highly of him. A question comes up. Well, what are you saying? Why are you telling me that no radiation is harmful? Yes, they did not know that it was harmful, but in a crazy way. And I think I'm going to stop because my head is pounding. I've conducted three interviews for the radio show. And that reminds me, I am going to shamelessly plug the radio show. I'm on www.uCy.tv Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And it is an activist forum voice. It's called the Age of Fission radio show because we're living in the Age of Fission. Thank you, Thomas Ackerman, for allowing me to use that title. And uh, we want healers and activists and people who want to speak out and are doing things, changing their lives, helping us learn things. So if you want to be on my radio show, please just uh, leave a comment, actually. Just say, hey, call me. I'd like to talk to you about being on the show. I do read all the comments because I delete any negative comments. No name calling. Anyways, wow. Put your courage feet on, you guys. we got to take action. Our Mother Earth is calling us, and we must respond. Ciao.